so this is number 30 from the optimization section, uh, four seven in the Stewart book. Um, trying to find the largest possible volume of a cylinder inscribed in a right circular uh, cone, right circular cylinder inscribed in a right circular cone. So um, here's the cone. And inside of that, we're going to have a cylinder. And uh, you're told that the cone has a base radius of R. Let me uh, make that a little clearer here. And uh, the cone also has a height of H. So those are constant values again, right? The, the dimensions of that uh, larger figure that the other figure is inscribed in are constants. So they're given as H and R. That means our answer is going to have H and R in it, and that's fine. Uh, in fact, that's one of the advantages to calculus um, is that you can solve these problems with these unspecified constants. If we were doing this on a pre-calc class, you'd have numbers for H and R. And then once you get your formulas, you just use a calculator to find the max or min. But your calculator, uh, if you have a TI-84, it doesn't know how to find a max or min um, in terms of these unspecified constants. And so, um, you know, that's, that's something calculus can do for us, uh, you know, there, where our calculators might fall short. Um, so anyway... This one's a little bit tricky. There's a couple of different ways you can go in here. And depending on how you do it, it could be easier or, or harder as a result. Um, we definitely want to relate the key features, or the, the key um, uh, dimensions of the cylinder to that H and R. That's, that's really important. And so let's start with our primary equation, which is going to be the volume of the cylinder. Um, here, I'll just write a CYL here. Um, and you know, that's going to be pi r squared h. Except, keep in mind, this is uh, not the r and h in the diagram, right? This is the r and h of the cylinder. And so I'm going to go ahead and kind of rename those. I'm going to call this x, since it's a horizontal variable, and I'll call the height y. And so I guess then what I really want let me kind of shrink this down. I won't get rid of it. Whoops, not that. Take this writing, and that's like just the formula for a cylinder. So I'm kind of put that off to the side. And then for our purposes, uh, what we have is V equals uh, pi x squared y then, right? And that's, that's great. This is our primary equation. We've got our primary equation. It looks simple enough. The problem is it's in terms of two different variables right now, right? We got x and we got y, and we want to get rid of one of those. We want to get one of those in terms of the other. So we need to relate x and y using r and h, or r and or h, I guess. Um, and there's a couple different ways you could go about this. Um, it's going to be tempting to maybe try to look for like a right triangle here and do like a Pythagorean theorem or something, but I don't think you'll get very far there. Um, this one's going to come down to similar triangles you might have been thinking. I don't know. You can see a couple in here. Um, let me point out that there is a, uh, if I drop an altitude on this cone, so that's H in length. There's that big triangle here where we have H and R and then, you know, the hypotenuse, which I'm not really going to use. So this is a right triangle. If this is, uh, these are right circular shapes here. And then, um, We've got these other two smaller triangles, and you really this is where you have a choice. Um, you have this triangle, and you have this triangle. And the first time I did this problem today, actually, um, I started with the one on top. I couldn't remember, and I didn't think ahead to think which one of these is going to be easier. I started with the one on top here, and it will work if you do the problem that way. I'll start it that way in a minute and show you. Um, it turns out, though, that if you do the one on the bottom here, this triangle with the big triangle, it's actually going to end up being a lot easier, well, I, I think, and I'll, I'll show you why. Um, 
if we use the one on top, which again, I'm saying we probably don't want to do, but um, this height of this triangle would be, well, H minus Y, right? And then the, the base of it's just X. So that's simple enough. And you could say, okay, um, you know, X over H minus Y. So like the, the bottom leg, you know, the, the base divided by the height uh, equals, and it should be the same thing in the bigger triangle, R over H. And that's true. And then, you know, we can solve for X, right? Because X is the easier one to solve for here. We're going to get X equals R times H minus Y over H. Now, we, we actually could solve for Y here also. So this, this would still work. Um, I want to point out, if you solve for X here, though, then when you substitute this in for X, we're going to have to square it. So we're going to be squaring that binomial. Um, and that just seems like that's going to be a little messier. And I think we, our job could be easier if I went the other way with this. Now, if I solve for Y at this point with this equation, it would still work. I could definitely do it that way. But I'm going to go back a bit here. And let's use the other triangle in the first place. So I'll get rid of all this. Again, more than one way to do a calc problem, though. That absolutely would have worked. So I'm going to focus on this triangle now instead. And um, I, I think this is overall easier. But, you know, I mean, I guess we could have done it the other way. Uh, oops. So we're going to do the base of this triangle is going to be r minus x, right? And the height's just y. And so uh, this is why I like this one. y is isolated kind of naturally here. So y over r minus x, whoops, which is, you know, height over base there, is equal to, again, the same thing for that larger triangle, right, that's a similar triangle. And uh, you know they're similar triangles because they share that same base angle, and they both have a right angle. Um, so that equals h over r. And, um, yeah, so we're going to get y equals h times r minus x over r, okay? And I, I, we would have gotten something similar, I think, if we took that other equation and solved for y. That would have worked, too. That's why we get to look at both approaches, though. Okay. So I'm going to substitute that into my volume equation. And again, the reason I wanted to isolate y is because there's just a y here. So it's going to be a little less messy. I don't have to expand the binomial and see what whatever happens there. Um, so now I get... With substitution here, v equals pi times x squared times, and you, you know what, real quick, I'm just going to take this y and, and simplify a little while we're at it. Um, I've got hr minus hx on top, right, and divided by r, so it's really just h minus h over r times x, right? So... Um, in fact, we can even take the h out. Well, we're going to distribute it, I think, is what we're going to do. So let's just leave it for now. hx over r. And, uh, yeah, what I want to do is distribute in, because my goal is to make my derivative, the, the, the calculus part, as easy as possible, right? So I'm going to make this pi hx squared. And I'm writing it this way because, remember, my only variable in this expression is x. h and r are both constants. So pi h x squared minus pi h over r x cubed. So that's v. And then if I take the derivative, dv dx, I'm going to get 2 pi h x minus 3 pi h over r x squared. And so I've got the derivative. And now what I need to do is set that derivative equal to zero. Or also, you know, places where the derivative does not exist or other possibilities. But that's not going to happen here, right? This is a quadratic expression, this derivative is, right? It's just x is the only variable. Everything else gets treated as a constant. And so um, we're just going to set this equal to zero and solve. You can factor out an x. Uh, while you're at it, you can factor out a pi h. Um, my inclination is just to add the negative term to the other side. 
So I get 3 pi h over r x squared equals 2 pi h x. And I guess, you know, factoring is maybe nicer because it shows all those solutions, including, you know, the solution where x equals 0. And you, you can see that here still, right? There is a solution where x equals 0. But um, that's kind of a, a dumb solution, right? It's like if x equals 0, that is one of the critical values. Um, that's not much of a cylinder, right? That's the, uh, it's, a, it's a degenerate uh, cylinder. It's a trivial solution. Right? That's a cylinder with zero radius, and so the height would be the entire height of the cone, and it's basically just a line segment. It has zero volume, so it's actually the absolute minimum volume. Um, we want the largest possible volume. Asking for the smallest possible volume would be dumb because it's not really a cylinder. Right? It's Zero volume isn't really a good answer. So we don't want that one. Um, the answer we do want, then, is you know, when you reduce out an x factor here, um, then you're going to get x, and, and if you multiply by the reciprocal of this mess, um, you're going to get x equals 2 pi h over, and then 3 pi h, and that r is going to go back on top. Of course, we can reduce, and we get x equals uh, 2 thirds r. So that's the x dimension of the optimal cylinder here, right? The the max value or a max volume cylinder that can be inscribed in a cone like this is going to be one where the um, the radius of the cylinder x is equal to two thirds of the radius of the cone, and then um, the Y coordinate in this case, the height of the cylinder, is going to, um, we can actually find that if we want to um, by looking for our uh, representation of Y here. And so that Y value is going to be H minus uh, H over R times X, which is 2 thirds R. So our optimal y value, the r's cancel out there, is going to be h minus two thirds h. So it's going to be one third h. Whoops. And uh, yeah, so those are the dimensions. Now, of course, we weren't asked to find the dimensions, right? So the last thing you always want to do, as soon as you find one optimal value, you know, don't necessarily go into finding the next one like I just did. Instead. Um, Look at the question again. What are we supposed to give? In this case, we want the max volume. Find the largest possible volume. So I'm just going to say V max. This is really the answer that we want. Um, and all you need for that, we really just needed the x value because we got the volume uh, right here in terms of just x. And so um, we're going to have what? Pi h times x squared. So pi h times um, 2 thirds r squared. So 4 ninths r squared and then minus um, pi h over r times two thirds r cubed. Let me move this over a little here. And that's going to be what? 8 27ths um, r cubed. And interestingly enough, these are actually like terms because that r cubed and the r on the bottom, that last expression uh, and that last term are going to um, reduce to an r squared. And so this is actually 4 ninths. This one's 8 27. I, I can make this 12 27 if I multiply by 3 over 3. And so I have 12 27ths pi r squared h minus 8 27ths pi r squared h. So it's actually going to be 4 27ths pi r squared h. So the max volume of the cylinder is 4 27ths pi r squared h, where r is the radius of the cone and h is the height of the cone.
Of course, the um, volume of the cone is one third pi r squared h, right? Which would be nine twenty sevenths. So this is actually four ninths of that volume. Just interestingly enough. Anyway, um, so again, there's lots of ways you can approach these, uh, and it's not always like they're not always the same difficulty. Sometimes if you go down one path in the setup on these problems you can make life a little bit more difficult for yourself uh, with the algebra and calculus to come. So it's a good idea to think for a minute sometimes and, and, and kind of look at your options and see, okay, which, which variable do I want to substitute in for? You know, in this case, I suggested subbing in for the Y because the X was squared. But sometimes, sometimes if, if the X is like a square root representation, like on a distance formula problem, then it's easier to sub in for the thing that's squared because the square just cancels out the square root. So you got to have a be flexible with your problem solving. I guess that's my my best advice. All right.